Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'll be going over how you effectively set up conversion tracking within your Duda website, right? How you actually set up uh, form conversion tracking, sorry, um, and how you kind of set this up to show up in Google Analytics. Now, first of all, what is form conversion tracking, okay? Every site should really have some sort of form conversion tracking enabled on their, on their, uh, on their forms, right? Obviously, if you are just designing a site, well, if you just you're just a business owner with a site, um, you don't you're not really bothered about you know how many people are coming to the site and things like that, and who's filling in forms and stuff like that. That's fine. That's completely fine. But this video will probably be more kind of directed at people that are running kind of campaigns, um, you know, running kind of paid advertising campaigns or SEO campaigns, um, or people that just want a general knowledge of you know, how many people are filling in forms and actually using my site each month, right? So to start off with, um, I just wanted to make it clear that you can track, you know, who are filling in your forms in Duda. Um, if you head over to the, if you head over to content, right? And you go to site content and you go to manage form responses, you'll be able to see who are um, filling in your forms, what month and what date, and things like that. Um, people are, you know, using your forms, right? Now, what I'll be showing you today is how to set this up in Google Analytics, right? This is kind of more if you're running uh, an actual campaign, right? If you're running some kind of SEO or paid advertising campaign. Um, I believe most businesses should have an idea of, you know, how many people are filling in forms on their site and stuff like that. Um, obviously, it goes in, you know, more in depth, um, the bigger the campaign um, and the more money you're investing in SEO or paid advertising, you really want to figure out you know, what your customers are doing on your site, um, what their kind of buyer journey, their user journey is and things like that, and all about kind of what they're doing on your site and how they're using your site, right? But obviously this is kind of can be used for, you know, uh, you know, simple just conversion tracking, right? That's all I'm, all I'm going to be going over today, you know, how to set up a conversion tracking on these specific forms um, using the actual widget itself. So inside this little widget in here, we'll be covering kind of um, setting up conversion tracking. Um, we will kind of go over the form conversion code, um, but what I'll be really going over today, guys, is how you can actually redirect to a page and then track that page inside Google, inside of Google Analytics. So once someone fills out this form, they're you know um, you know uh, they're redirected to a thank you page, a specific page which is tracked in Google, inside of Google Analytics. Now, before we get into that, I just want to kind of go over you know what are macro and micro conversions because obviously. I will be going over, you know, how to uh, track your form fields, just a really simple uh, video today. But I think it's good to touch on kind of what are the differences in conversions on your site. OK, so a micro or a macro conversion, right, is your end goal of the site, right? What you want your user to do, um, it, whether it's fill out a form, whether it's call you up click to call maybe, whether it's download, well, download a guide or, well, let's say a demo request, let's say they ask for a demo request, things like that, right? So your kind of main conversion, um, or let's say add to cart as well for e-commerce, uh, you know, clients and things like that. So I will add to or purchase an item, for example. Um, and then you kind of move on to the micro conversions, right? And these are the kind of the smaller conversions that people often forget to track or they're often overlooked, right? And these can be things like, um, you know, download a guide, page views, you know, uh, using the search feature. Um, clicking on certain buttons, downloading, oh, I said download a guide, add to cart, uh, video views, things like that, right? And you can look these up online if you want to see some examples of micro conversions, right? Now, why am I talking about this, right? I'm talking about this is because if you're not tracking, you know, if you're only tracking macro conversions, you're only seeing, you know, I guess you could say this may sound a bit cheesy, but you're only seeing one chapter of the uh, the the user journey, right? You're like say if you think about a book, um, and this user has gone through lots of different things throughout your site to then become a client, right? To then make that macro conversion, you're only seeing, you know, one chapter, or you're only seeing the conclusion of that book, right? So you really want to be tracking, you know, the full process and the full buyer journey and how they got to that destination, okay? Um, and you can also figure out 
where certain people have been you know dropped off as well so for example if someone's landed on your site right and they've downloaded a guide and that's it right they've never come back they've never viewed your articles they've never, well they've never you know they've never made another micro conversion they've never made a macro conversion and they just disappeared right then you can actually figure out you know how many people are doing that and if you may need to make changes towards you know your 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 site or you need to make changes to certain things on your site if you're seeing a lot of people are getting to maybe the first let's say um, micro conversion right this is a good example down here so for example there's no conversion activity they've they've landed on your page for you know from a blog post or from you know a service page or whatever they've landed on your page and they get to the first micro conversion the second micro conversion and the macro conversion which is the the main the main conversion that we want the money right so let's say for example for example like this first micro conversion is a video view right and then you've got the second micro conversion which is a add to cart okay and then they get to the final macro conversion which is purchasing the item right let's say they've land you know you're getting lots of traffic and they're watching the video but they're not moving on to buying the product, okay? Then you know, right, if you're seeing a lot of people doing this within within the user journey, right, and you can track this in Google Analytics, you then can, you know, figure out if there's an issue, okay? Then you can realize, you know, well, we need, you know, there must be an issue with this, okay? If a lot of people are dropping off, you know, on the first macro, right, in the first micro conversion, all right? Um, and then you can also see if, you know, uh, certain people are getting to that sec second micro conversion, they're adding to cart, but then they're, um, they're dropping off. Maybe you need to develop a solution to that issue, right? And that could be sending out, you know, uh, you know, reminder cart emails, okay? Just an example. I'm not very good, I'm not, well, I'm not great at kind of, you know, e-commerce and things like that. I really stick to lead gen and local businesses, but that's, just an idea okay so you're creating solutions based on the data um, within your kind of conversion activity right um, and you're really understanding what the user journey is and what it's about and what they're doing on your site right um, obviously this is you know more for people I would say this is more I mean I, I if, if you ask me, right, I'd recommend every business set this up, but it is quite, you know, um, time consuming. It is quite in depth to set this up correctly. Um, I'd recommend this is more kind of for people that are investing a lot of money into PPC and SEO and things like that. OK, now, uh, one guy before I move on, one guy I would recommend you check out is Ed Leak. Um, he basically covers micro and macro conversions in depth in his God tier ads um, system. OK, so I will leave a link in the description below if you are interested in that. I did do a, an interview with him as well recently. OK, right uh, now to move on to the actual setting up the tracking on the form. If we click on this little system here, so this is just my own website. Um, it's not up currently, guys, if you are trying to access it. It's just on like a coming soon page. But for the, for the purpose of this uh, video, um, I'm going to be uh, publishing this page to show you how you can actually track your, um, your form fields, right? So we go into the form down here. And the way you can add this, this form, by the way, guys, if you are... Um, new to do that is obviously going to the widget section and just typing out form and you can drag that in so we go over to the form and we go to submission um, we've also got the integration section up here as well um, I'm not going to cover this today but you can actually you, you know you can integrate um, into Google Sheets and MailChimp and things like that if you are using you know a third-party platform right which we are we're using Google Analytics um, but I'm going to be showing you how you can track um, when someone's filled in a form uh, using Google Analytics, right? And this will be tracking the macro conversion, right? We're not gonna be talking about micro conversions anymore. Um, we're just gonna be showing you how to set up tracking on macro conversion um, form, right? So, uh, submission actions, you head over to submission actions, you uh, scroll down and you've got redirect to a page after submission. So we click that. And then what we do is I've just created an example in here is we head over to we find the page and what you want to do is you want to create a thank you page and this thank you page you want to make sure is um, inaccessible to anyone else on the site right um, so you want to make sure maybe it's like a uh, let's just say it's not in the navigation bar um, it's you know uh, de-indexed as well so there's no indexed 
Um, so it can't show up in Google, so people can't access this page, right? I'm going to be showing you why you should do this in a minute, okay? So we've set this up. Um, when they fill in the form, they redirect to uh, that specific page, okay? Now, the reason why you don't want to um, have anyone else land on this page is because what Google will then do is assign every user in Google Analytics using the goal system, which I'm going to show you in a minute, um, we will assign every user that lands on that page as a conversion, right? So what you want to make sure is no one can access this page except from when they um, fill in the form, right? Okay. Also, you want to make sure that you no index thank you pages anyway, because it's just good practice um, to not have irrelevant pages showing up in Google, right? Being indexed by Google, okay? So we head over to analytics and we go to goal setup. So how I got to this is I went to um, conversions and I went to goals uh, and I went, you know, I mean, obviously I haven't set anything up really in my uh, own analytics account. I did do a test earlier, um, but what you want to do is you want to head over here and it'll give you an option to set up goals. You just want to click set up goals and then it will take you to uh, it will take you to uh, this system in here, goals. You want to go new goal, and you want to go custom, right, continue. You want to give it a description, form fill, uh, doodle, right? And then you want to, oh, whoopsie daisy. And then what you want to do is you want to go down to the type, which is where you can start to structure your macro and micro conversions, right? And this sometimes may require the use of Google Tag Manager. Um, however, you know, if you can keep it all in the Google Analytics system, the better, right? Because you're avoiding having, you know, adding tags and scripts and things to, the, to your own website, which can, you know, slow it down in some cases, right? <clears throat> and it's good to have it all in one place, obviously. So destination. You want to hit destination, destination. so um, this would be, so what you're doing is you're hitting destination, so what you can then do is then you can add the URL, right, which will um, which will be assigned in Google Analytics, so any anytime anyone lands on that page, it is shown up as a, a conversion, right? So we go to, back to goal description, I just wanted to highlight some other bits as well, so duration, right, um, you can cover, you know, how many people stay on the page, uh, pages and screens per session. Um, so obviously this is how many you know pages they viewed and things like that. If they viewed three pages, you can cast that as a conversion or a micro conversion. Uh, event played a video, which is oh, again this is a, a, an example of a micro conversion. So if someone's landing on that page, playing a video, but then dropping off, or you know playing the video and then moving on to making a a conversion or making a uh, a form fill or a macro conversion, you know that that video, you know, if you're seeing a lot of people are doing this, you know that that video is somewhat um, useful to your, uh, you know, uh, campaign, right? Now, uh, pages, just shut the door here. Pages, uh, screens, yeah, so we've, um, again, with destination as well, if you're, uh, you know, tracking guide downloads and things like that, what you can then do is create like a, a thank you page. Um, so when someone downloads a guide, they get redirected to a thank you page, which is similar to what we're doing now, but for form fields instead. So you can also track guide downloads and things like that. So we continue, we add the URL in here. Um, <clears throat> We want to, if you if you want to, you can add a value as well, which is nice when doing reporting. Um, I do talk about this, the, you know, the importance of adding, you know, values to your conversions because then you can report back to the client with, you know, the estimated amount per lead. Well, it, for each lead that month. So if you get 100 leads, you know, um, you can put a value to each lead. Obviously, not every lead and form fill and things like that turn out to be uh, a real clients. But it gives your uh, business owner an idea of, you know, what you're doing. Well, it gives your uh, business owner kind of, um, you know, it gives your business owner a good idea of the return on investment from your work. Obviously, if they are, you know, if, if they are receiving lots and lots of clients in their small business anyway, they're probably, well, online, from online, they're probably seeing that your work is um, doing very well. But it's just another thing to add 
um, to your reporting process on like, you know, an estimated amount per month on how much you've, on how much that client has received through their site, right? In, in terms of leads, okay? Um, I do talk about this on my YouTube channel. If you are interested, head over to uh, my channel in here and then go over to report on revenue, not rankings, okay? And I talk about the importance in there. But this is one way of doing it. Um, with form fills and things like that. Um, I do talk about it in um, this video here and I talk about, uh, you know, using call rail and tracking uh, the value of certain calls to the business as well. So call recordings and stuff like that. Okay, so uh, we move on. Um, we go save and there you have it, right? It's a really simple uh, process and to show you kind of how this would work. So if I went to uh, the page in here and I go to um, conversion tracking test, right? I fill in the form. And then it redirects me to the thank you page in here. So that should show up in the Google Analytics goal system um, after I do this, right? Um, and that should identify as a conversion in Google Analytics, right? Um, if I've you know, if there's something that, uh, you know, you'd recommend me do, you know, that's probably a better way of doing it. Let me know in the comments below. This is just a really basic process um, to really set up your conversion trackings, uh, you know, your conversion tracking in Duda. Um, obviously, there are ways if you are, you know, if you're using another tool, you know, say Google Tag Manager or Facebook or Google Ads, what you can do is you can go to tracking and add a form conversion code, which will fire every time someone um, fills in that form. And this is pretty more geared towards kind of, you know, uh, Google Tag Manager, Google AdWords. They do have Google uh, Analytics on here, listed on here, but I'd recommend using these kind of uh, platforms in terms of, you know, using the tracking feature. Okay. So that's how you do it, guys. Um, is there anything I need to go over? Anything else I need to go over? If you have any questions, just comment below. Um, but this is a really basic, simple, uh, you know, technique that you can set up on your Google Analytics uh, system um, to track the forms. Um, so, yeah. Thank you very much, guys. Also, uh, join my Facebook group if you haven't already. You can get a free SEO checklist in there. You can get a, a free proposal template. And this is all mentioned on my channel. You just got to find it. Um, you can get all that goodie, all that good stuff inside my Facebook group. Also, you can speak with the community and speak with me as well. Ask any questions you may have. All right, then. Thank you very much. See you later.